Hi everybody, I'm here to talk to you about relays and how to get a relay to trigger a plasma torch. Got a couple of images I just want to go through and, and then do a little bit of a actual show you how the relays themselves work. So obviously just very quickly this is a relay. These are relays that you use for an Arduino. As you can see over there we have ground, 5 volts and we need a signal that triggers the relay to be on and off. The relay has Normally closed, common, and normally open. So depending on how you connect them, the relays will work in a certain. So it literally switches either from that way there or that way there. That's how it works. Um, just to let you know, you get different types of relays, and I'll show you. You get a single relay like this, and then you get uh, double relays like that. Um, and I just want to show you how to set them up. So let's just go and look at the at the actual plasma torch itself and what it is that we're trying to do. So in the plasma torch, um, we have a switch over here which is the actual switch that we press for the plasma torch to come on now if you buy a machining plasma torch it doesn't come with a switch it just comes with cables that go straight into the back of um, for example the, the CNC machine um, and that then will have its own relay that will turn on and off and that will then fire and trigger the plasma to come on but if we are doing a DIY which is this is all undesigned for is we need to somehow push that trigger without physically being over the table trying to do it with our fingers because that just wouldn't work. So the easiest way to do that is what we do is we take this cable that runs to the torch, we remove, not remove the cable, but we move the cable and we move it down to the relay. Um, so we move it down and we get the relay to turn on and off by a signal from the breakout board which will turn on the trigger uh, as we go. So that's as simple as it actually is. So if we look at the breakout board and this is the key bit here that <clears throat> one of or what I'm trying to uh, get to which is why you need the relay the breakout board itself is a 5 volt uh, on this particular board it's a 5 volt ground uh, positive 5 volt and this is what it takes to drive this board which then goes to the motors and the input um, so your, your switches that um, limit switches and, and things like that those are the input signals on that side and this normally connects to the to the motors to make it run but what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the same board to then send an output signal to the relay and when it outputs it to the relay it then turns it on and off so the challenge we've got here is that the question is well why don't we just connect the uh, the plasma torch straight to the uh, the relay straight to this and then or the plasma torch straight to this and switch it on and off that's not really very safe to do on a board like this. Um, just you want to isolate it as much as you can. Uh, that's the one thing. And then the second thing, from a relay point of view, this board doesn't have enough power in the the five and ground voltage to actually drive a relay. So you can't just drive the relay straight off this board. What we need to do is we need to run the power that comes from here. So we take the positive five volts from here that goes into this board, and we run it to the relay, and then we run the ground as well to the relay. So if if you think about it it's running in parallel we have this running in as one board on its own with the 5 volt coming in common 5 volts and common ground and we're then teeing that off and running it to the 5 volts and the and the far and the ground of the relay what we then are doing is we're taking just this one single pin to trip to tr not trip but to trigger the relay and that will then get the arc or get the plasma then to fire because it will close the connection for us like we physically put in the trigger and that works. So let's just dive into how that actually works and let me do the demonstration of actually getting this thing to trigger. I have done it before in a previous video but let me just go through it again. So I hope this sort of makes sense in your mind and maybe it's a good idea to actually have and, and I'll show you and I'll tell you some ways of testing this um, that you can test it yourself. So let's jump into it. I'm just going to close this up and get the relay in place. So <laughs> here is the relay, um, like I said this is an Arduino relay, I think one of the things that we need to know about the relay uh, which is quite important from an Arduino point of view is it's actually designed for microcontrollers so it's got a few bits and pieces attached to this little relay board and what that does is the minute a coil closes down or, or, or you know there's no more power to a coil, the coil itself generates its own electricity and will force that back and what this does is it actually just eliminates any sparks going back into the board or back into the power unit so it's safe to be using on microcontrollers and it will be safe to be used on your bob 
here are the different versions of it you get one that's a double this is a single here are my power leads i have a black which obviously is ground and i have red which is obviously positive five volts i have a little bench power supply which i'm going to start up here which is running at five volts and it has 84 milliamps is what it will be putting out so if i look at this board here i've got a negative which is over there i then positive i then have um, my switch which i'm going to use to turn it on so let's just do that there so let's put the negative on the negative it's as easy as that and you can use any five volt dc power supply it doesn't really matter um, and then i'm going to put the positive on the positive and let's hope nobody dies there's no little wires or anything i'm then going to take my signal wire i'm going to put it onto the green well it can be any color it doesn't really matter put the signal on that and now if i take the signal and so electronics isn't really it doesn't the worst, not the worst, I suppose you can die, really, if you overcook it, but not on this 5 volts, 84 milliamps. The worst that can happen is a magic smoke leaves the units. So if I do this on the negative, nothing happens. As soon as I do it on the positive, fuck all happens either. That's not very good. Okay, let's try again. If I do this on the negative, nothing happens. If I do this on the positive, oh look, we get a little flashy light and, and it's now the relay is triggering. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is this here, let's just put it on the voltmeter. Always good to have a handy voltmeter, so let's do this here. So we can see what we're doing. So getting okay, addressed to the lights on, let's see what we're doing. Okay, so if I just take this here and we test the voltage, let's make sure we do negative, negative, positive, positive. If I do that, I'm negative. You can see I've been 5.05 volts, which is very, like very much nothing. Um, if I check, so the center is a common, so if I do common and I do this here, it will show me nothing because there's no, because it's not about voltage, is it? Let's do this, let's make the squeaky sound. There you go. So yeah, here you go, we've got common. And we've got, as you can see, nothing's happening there. Let's make it up there. So that is a normally closed situation. So between those two, it's normally closed. There's a connection between the two. There's no connection there. But if I hold these two in place, like this here, and then I touch this, and now I get that signal right. That's what I'm looking for with a plasma torch. Now, the easiest way for you to test this, to make sure that this is working, is do exactly what I've done here. Just take a simple five volt power supply. They, they, you can buy them by the, the thousands of years. I've got little bits and pieces here like this. So take something like this here, which is nice and cheap. You get it from any Amazon or little cheapy shop like this here. And this has um, gives you different ranges of voltages that you're going to have. It also tells you how many amps. This is one uh, amp that it puts out. It comes with a little connection like this here. But nothing a pair of scissors can't fix. You just cut that off and then you can just measure which ones are positive and which is the negative. And then you can adjust it with that. And then you can actually then use this to test this out. And then you connect it exactly like I've shown you here. So let's go through the connections again very simply. So we have negative. We have positive and we have our trigger. Now, it really doesn't matter if you cock it up because you're not really gonna blow anything up. It's really, it's gonna have very low voltages here. On your brake, so test this first. Make sure you've got this working before you plug it into your breakout board. On your breakout board, you will have five volts that is, that's powering your breakout board. Now, I don't know if you're using the new version that has a USB five volts that plugs into the computer. I haven't really looked at any of those. Um, not necessarily a big fan of the whole USB thing um, because it, you know, if there's interrupt issues and, and so on, like so USB has its own um, issues and it can slow down and then you're not getting great cuts. Anyway, so, but if you're using five volts that's charging the, the bob as per the picture I showed previously, which on this video editing, I'll just fire up again, um, you connect it in parallel. Now, if you don't know what parallel is, you really just need to go on the web and have a look to see the difference in serial connections in parallel but you effectively have another two sets of wires that are going from the connection into your bob and then you have this going into the port of the bob that is going to trigger the actual relay and that's what you do and then you can test that so unplug everything from your breakout board plug in the relay set up your mic software and test it see what it does you should be able to get it to switch on and off on and off on and off if you're setting the, the correct code to it um, and then that will let you know that it will work and then you connect it up to your plasma cutter 
and that's how I did mine um, and still run it like that today. Okay, well that's me. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoy this. Hopefully this is useful. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks.